In New Zealand, flight 8137 from Auckland to Tauranga on Sunday the 16th of January 2022 on a de Havilland-8300. Scheduled to depart at 3.35pm, flight time 40 minutes. This is the second of two flights between Wellington and Tauranga. The second flight's such a short hop that I actually spend longer waiting in the departure lounge than I do on the plane. But the 50 minute wait between flights gives me time to charge my bits and bobs, and then I head to my departure gate. The air bridges for domestic jets are at one end of the terminal, and the gates for arriving and departing turboprops are way down the other end. So I head downstairs and then along the length of the terminal to my departing gate. At this time in New Zealand, everyone who wants to be is vaccinated and the government has changed from a zero COVID policy to managing the spread through mask use and distancing and stuff like that. Which made the relatively short period of time I spent at this end of the terminal feel like a lot, lot longer. But in not too long, they called my flight and on I went. We left the gate right on time at 3.35pm, we taxied for 7 minutes and took off at 3.42. We pushed back from gate 46 into Charlie 5 and taxied via Charlie 5 and Bravo. Then we stopped at the hold marker on Bravo and did a U-turn and taxied back along Bravo, Bravo 3, across Alpha via Alpha 3 and into 23L via Alpha 3A and took off to the west. Now the safety on board card is located in the seat pocket in front of you and it illustrates the emergency brace position, where our emergency exits are and how to open them. We have two exits located forward of row 1 and two window exits adjacent to row 10. So I to appreciate your attention and remind you at this point that all transmitting functions on your electronic devices should be switched to flight or aeroplane mode, and that mask must remain covering your nose and mouth. Thank you.
outside on for the moment, so please ensure that you remain seated with those seatbelts fastened. Food and beverage consumption should be kept to an absolute minimum. Folks, we now invite you to sit back and relax and enjoy the short week journey with Air New Zealand down to Tauranga. We took off towards the west and then completed a series of left-hand turns and then checked in a straight shot towards Tauranga. COVID restrictions combined with a short flight time mean there's no service on this flight, so it's straight to the plane. This plane, ZKNEQ, is a de Helleven DHC-8311Q, often referred to as a Dash 8300 or a Q300. I don't know why it has so many names, but it does. It was manufactured in October 2006 and has been owned by Air New Zealand or one of its subsidiaries that entire time. It's configured with 50 economy class seats and I was seated near the front by the propeller in seat 4A. This aircraft had an incident on the 9th of February 2011 when it landed with its nose wheel retracted. The plane was heading from Hamilton to Wellington. Prior to taking off from Hamilton, the nose wheel steering malfunctioned because an inhibit switch in the cockpit was faulty. The system was considered non-essential, so in accordance with the minimum equipment list, the aircraft left Hamilton with the system inoperative. The trip south was uneventful. However, on approach to Wellington, none of the landing gear extended because the faulty switch had caused a problem with the hydraulics for both the nose wheel steering and the landing gear system. The pilots did a go around to give them time to use the alternate gear extension procedure which succeeded in getting the main landing gear extended but the nose landing gear remained locked in the retracted position. The pilots decided to divert to Woodburn and land with the nose landing gear retracted. No one was injured in the landing and damage was confined to the nose landing gear doors and surrounding structure and three antennae on the lower fuselage. It turns out that there was nothing mechanically wrong with the alternate landing gear extension system. The nose landing gear did not extend because the pilots didn't hop pull hard enough on the handle that should have released the uplock. If the uplock had released, the nose landing gear would have lowered under gravity and locked down. Oh, bad one. Seems like everyone learned quite a lot that day. Even the manufacturer. The findings from the official report were fed back to de Havilland and the minimum equipment list was updated to incorporate them. It took about six weeks for ZKNEQ to be patched up and it returned to service on the 24th of March 2011. The overhead bins are just a little bit tight for a full-size carry-on. There's space under the seat in front for a laptop or small backpack, and there's a wee pouch on the back of the seat in front. The seats themselves were comfortable enough for this 40-minute trip, and they'd be fine for an hour or so. The seat pitch, or the distance between seats on this aircraft, is 32 inches. I'm 5 foot 11 or 180 centimetres tall, and it was fine. There's a tray table that we didn't use in this flight. It was an okay size. In the overhead panel, there's lights, air, and a call button. Overall, this this plane's been well maintained and it hasn't significantly changed since I flew on it the week before from Tauranga to Wellington and I'm going to give it the exact same score, 7 out of 10. Nice one! Now, if you've moved any hand luggage during our flight, please ensure this has been restowed either under the seat in front of you or in the overhead lockers. We veer slightly left a couple of times, then as we're approaching Tauranga we take a right hand turn followed by a left hand turn and come into Tauranga from the west. Tauranga Airport has four runways, but only one of them is asphalt and we landed on that. We approached from the west and landed on 07. After decelerating, we turned around, taxied back along the runway, then exited via Alpha 2 and parked up on gate 3.
remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the seatbelt sign is turned off. It's now safe for transmitting functions on your electronic devices to be turned on. A reminder that these devices must not be used as you cross the tarmac. And please follow the clearly marked path through to the terminal. We ask that you ensure that all items, including rubbish and face masks, are removed from the seat pocket and areas and disposed of in the appropriate bins inside the terminal. Now, on behalf of Air New Zealand and your flight crew, it's certainly been our pleasure bringing you through to Tauruma today, and we look forward to the opportunity of being of service to you again in, in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the aircraft door is now open. A reminder that your electronic devices must not be used as you cross the tarmac. Matua. <laughs> What a wonderful human! We landed at 4.07, three minutes ahead of schedule, taxi for two minutes, parked up at the gate at 4.09, that's six minutes ahead of schedule. Let's sum up, there was no snack and the plane got a seven, so I guess that's a seven. Nice one! I've got a wee bit of time to wait for my ride, long enough that I got to see my inbound plane taking off on the way out, so lucky you, you get to watch that right now! Here it is! like this video, subscribe to our channel and then watch every single video we've ever made and everyone we will make. Thanks.